There'd be a lot of poop in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a six foot alligator go swinging through the air and slam into a tree. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural, lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, Mothman. Oh yeah, Mothman. A great white shark was stolen. Oh, someone stole a shark? I got stuff for you you don't even know about. She's a witch. She turned me into a newt. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Anything could be possible. It's really big Mm -hmm. abduction vibes. Holy moly. It sounds like you were abducted. And it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going and going. And she goes, what the... Cryptids of the Corn Podcast. I am the great and powerful mystery. Are you reading that in iambic pentameter? No. Oh, okay. 432 hertz. Ew, the healing frequency. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, I'm Jay, clone number 74. You didn't get the Betty reference, did you? No. Oh, Kung Pao, enter the fish. <laughs> My name is Betty. I still don't get it. Oh, you, you gotta see that movie. It's so good. Is it? It's so good. Sounds like it. It's the movie where he dubs over the voices. He puts himself in like the old, uh, like Japanese, like we karate stop fighting about movies. Nothing at the beginning of these. Ugh. I listened to last week's episode for the first time, like as like just listening. Yeah. And we talked about jelly with no context for like ten mm. minutes. Good, good old jelly. Uh, yeah, but we never said that uh, we had made homemade jelly for the first time. I like, don't remember talking about it. Yeah, I know. We oh, just okay. said the stupidest stuff. <laughs> and I have to apologize. Last week I stumbled a lot. I was still getting over being sick. I'm still coughing a little bit. It's been yeah. only like four and a half weeks. It's been crazy. You'll get through it. It's been over a month. You just got to keep fighting it off. I know. All right, so we're back. Round two, Denver International Airport. Oh, we're back. Last week was a lot more of the history than the mystery. Yeah. But it's cool because doing this part two-parter this way, we've never done a two-parter this way, where I got to read some of the comments in between. Uh, I guess a lot of the murals and stuff have been taken down now. Really? And we just had a couple of listeners fly into Denver. Yeah. And we're asking where the stuff was, and all the staff wouldn't tell them or acting like it wasn't real and stuff like that. What? Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I've seen them. I know, but now, like, they were flying it, but Denver's a huge airport. Oh, it's gigantic. Once yeah. again, remember, 35,000 mm-hmm. employees. It's huge. The largest single employer in all of Colorado. That's, that's insane. The airport. Yeah, because when you go there, you have to shuttle, like, to each. I remember if there's like three separate terminals. The only international airport I've ever been to was Daytona, mm-hmm. and we had to take a train. Yeah, to get to our terminal. Yeah, you have to shuttle your tr- the, each train to each different terminal. Yeah, and it takes forever. And uh, Daytona is not like so. Denver is both a gigantic international airport. Yeah, for uh, consumers mm-hmm. and for industry. Mm-hmm. Daytona is not a big industry one. I'm sure it has, you know, it has industry, but not like more of a vacation. Yeah, people. Yeah, it's a just, lot more people based mm-hmm. versus car- cargo. Right. And Denver's both. Yeah, it's gigantic. It is huge. I mean, it's, can't state that enough. It's gigantic. But uh, yeah, where did we leave off last time? I we're going to talk about Lucifer. Right. That's where we left off. Uh, not the weirdest thing at the airport, but it's the weirdest thing that every person sees. Okay. Because every, no matter, like, all these little things we're going to talk about after Lucifer, like, you got to go hunt for. Yeah. Lucifer is, like, right in your face, it's right when you're... a gigantic blue horse with, if you have kids, turn us down, a giant penis and glowing red eyes. It's a way to give them time to turn it down, like, if you turn this down. Giant penis. I mean, anatomically, <laughs> it is a male yeah. horse. Yeah. And it is a very excited horse. With the glowing red eyes. Glowing red eyes. And, uh... I think the original, goal, we'll talk about it in a minute, they're supposed to have smoke coming out of its nose and stuff like that. Man, it's like the... Uh, it's supposed to be a hell horse. Yeah. Is that the horse they... That's what the, the horse does, I think, at the Denver uh, Louis, football stadium. Jazz Jazmuris? 
Jismur, Jim Murris? Lewis. We're going to call him Lewis. There we go. The artist. When it comes to the Denver International Airport, there are many conspiracies floating around. Everything from barbed wire fences along the perimeter facing inward. Facing inward. So keep stuff in. Mm-hmm. Supposed to keep the uh, hypothetical prisoners in, which we'll talk about. Hypothetical? Yeah. To the dark, subliminal messaging that could be extended from the mural, murals painted from last week, scattered through the terminals. However, at least one of these stories uh, has an artisan since it's been, uh, sorry, has had an artisan, and I can't read. I can't read today. It's already It's already bad. Here we go. Or we're going to talk about the story of Blucifer. Yes. A notably dubbed by the residents as Blucifer, but it's a 100% true story. The same sculpture that cannot be missed by visitors that come to the DIA. When it sits probably in the middle of the uh, Pena Boulevard, linking the airports to the city, you have to drive past this, either leaving or coming to the airport. Yep. The most renowned for its, uh, <laughs> its act of patricide. What's that? Killing a parent. Oh, okay. The statue has killed a parent. Hmm. Uh, more simply, in the process of being made, Lucifer unsuspectedly killed its maker and wounded several other people. What are you doing? I'm looking up a picture of Lucifer. The statue was originally commissioned to be built by the city of Denver in the mid-1990s. The current in Denver International Airport where it was being established. The airport itself was being thought to be unneeding by some, completely, unres- or completely unreasonably over budget and woefully behind schedule like we talked about last week. The statue was complete behind the or behind schedule, and was unveiled at the airport in what year, Jay? Uh, nineteen. Wait, don't tell me off the top of my head. Nineteen seventy-eight? No, eighties. It was eighties. No, 19- okay. No, let's. I'm going to give you the numbers. Okay. Remember, airport construction didn't begin till eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. That's right. Airport didn't open to ninety-five. Yep. It's been a week. So nineteen ninety-seven. 2008. Oh, what? What? This was commissioned in 1990. And it took 18 years? Yes. What? Yes. That's like as long from when I was born until I graduated high school. The international airport was built faster. Than the stupid statue. The second largest airport in the world oh was my built gosh. faster than the statue. It must have been the blue paint. So as the story goes, the <gasps> artist Lewis. Never mind. Go on. No, the particle beam. <laughs> was originally working on the now famous Blue Mustang, his largest commission piece to date, and the commission from the city of Denver that was placed outside its recently built airport. The section or this the section of the thirty two foot tall, nine thousand pound cast fiberglass sculpture fell on him, severing his carotid artery in his leg. That's insane. That would end up unfortunately killing him. And the sculptor had to be finished uh posthumously by his family, his friends and professional lowrider and race car painter Richard Lavotte mm. and Camel Nius. Sorry, these Western names are kind of hard for me because they have little squiggles over them, and I don't know how to correctly <laughs> pronounce them. Uh, so he was killed. A giant section of this severed, like just cut his leg off. Yeah, which is, what are the odds of that? Like fell just right on mm-hmm. him. Man. And then it was finished by his son, other family members, in a professional bull rider and a professional race car painter. So the group a, of people they got to finish this thing was a well, weird assembly. It's a it's a hodgepodge, a mixed bag. Mm-hmm. So uh, the Mustang statue is uh, University of Oklahoma. Blue Server was based on an earlier eight foot tall Mustang statue that was placed outside the University of Oklahoma. Despite the sculpture having been finished by those close to uh, Lewis. The piece was actually very near complete upon the artist's untimely death. He almost got to see it finished. Only some of the painting needed to be finished, and then was sent to California to be reassembled and sent back in its final placement. Okay. It's a very weird process. I still is, that, is that just to paint it? No, he painted it there okay. in chunks. Okay. Sent it away to California to be put all together and brought back in one piece. Oh, okay. Okay. However, the unique textures used to uh, synthesize exaggerations in the piece is something that Luis is most known for and is better yet being imprinted upon the new generation of artists inspired by his style. So, yeah, he wanted this very vivid blue color mm-hmm. and the anatomically correct figure in the animal. Okay. Uh, and that was a big debate piece. What, as far as? The anatomical correct nature. Why is that? 
because it has a giant nine foot long penis now, that hangs right where you take your picture. Now I'm looking at these photos and I can't s- notice that. Yeah, they purposely take photos not to show off the penis. That's what it's hard to distinguish that feature. So Luis loved traditional Mexican muralism and the bright colors it would give and encourage the boy to grow up uh, working in his father's shop in El Paso, Texas. So that's where he said the blue color came from. Yeah, okay. Was well, his Mexican heritage. Okay. And if you look at a lot of like Mexican artwork and stuff like that, this vibrant blue yeah, is it highly does. favored. Yeah, it does. It does. It has it in there. Bright yeah. colors are highly favored by Mexican artwork. Okay. And I, I agree. I love bright colors. I think, you know, it's... and it, So that's why he kind of picked the blue. Uh, but so, yeah, his textures. And he also used textured paint to kind of make the thing pop and make the like the veins and stuff pop. And that's what I was going to bring that up. Funny you say the veins. Because I'm looking at it like a bunch of these pictures, and there's a lot of up-close ones. And there's a lot of detail, like, in the face and, and then on the sides of the body with the veins, like, even raised up out of this, you know, off the skin, like varicose veins. Mm-hmm. But running up down the side and on the face, it looks really creepy. Yeah, no, the horse is terrifying. It's yeah. Like a 40-foot-tall demon. Uh, so <laughs> It does. It looks this like This is a demon right horse. at the head of the urban art movement, and the style started to show up through the blue Mustang. Uh, even its rearing up of the horse is used to symbolize the freedom of the Southwest that it has to offer all those who come to visit. <laughs> this is in Lewis's uh, d- description, not mine. Still, Lucifer is most well known for his luminous red eyes juxtaposed against the blue body and deeply set in the head, and the horse is looking towards the Rocky Mountains. When you drive past the blue Mustangs, gaze cannot be missed. It seems that it's an all-seeing gatekeeper for those who are heading towards aw- towards or away from the city. Even the dead or at the dead of night, when the body of the sculpture is invisible against the black road surrounding it, the eyes of Lucifer are unwavering in the lit bright red lights that will all who pass by. So there's some pictures of this thing at night. You yes. can't see it because the horse is not lit up. But you see the two the red, red eyes. eyes of this forty foot tall monster. That is uh, frightening. If you see, if you haven't seen. At up to this point during episode one, if you didn't take a p- time to look up a picture of Blues for yet, please do it. Look up its face, and if you add extra words to your search, you can get other areas. You can get up close and personal. Did you find it? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. So, so it, it's it's length isn't as long as you'd say, but the it's very. Big though, it's very girthy. You gotta remember, it's a forty foot tall horse. Right. So when your family's standing next to it, it's the size of your kid. What well, that and the testes on it are gigantic as well. Oh yeah, they're like beanbag chairs. And it even shows. It even has the butt, like a lot of detail on the butt. Oh, it has a sphincter. Oh yeah, exactly. That's exact. And let me find where I was just at. Uh, there's a nice uh, look at this postcard. It says "Welcome to Denver" on it. <laughs> And it's like yeah. a postcard of Lucifer's butt, like uh, just straight Pucker. up in the middle. It just says, welcome to Denver, plastered over it. I and mean, there's even veins coming out of that area, yeah. like highly detailed. This thing is a lot of details up close and personal. So the name Lucifer was bestowed upon Lewis's sculpture by locals shortly after the unveiling. Mm. So everybody's seen this like, yeah, that's called Lucifer. Lucifer. Yeah. A combination of the name Blue, because uh, the local Blue Mustang, and the name Lucifer. Because the archangel who fell from heaven, who rules the underworld, seemed fitting appropriately as unveiling the demon horse who reared as tall out, or is so tall outside the Denver airport. So he didn't lose it. Luis did not get to see his creation finished. Right, he died eight days before it finished. Yeah, man, he hung on for like a year and a half. Was it? This, was this the guy that got his leg chopped? Yeah. Okay, okay. And he had chronic illness after. It never he like he tried to make it. So yeah. So oh sorry. I mean, so that loud and outspoken distant outline in the media of Lucifer followed the unveiling of February two thousand eight, commissioned by the city. Keep in mind it was commissioned in nineteen ninety. Right. And it's oh eight when this is out. Uh typically uh generated to be on display for five years. So they were only gonna keep it on display for about five years before they moved it. Right. It did not only stay for five years. Only then, after five year waiting period, can works even be bought before the city commission for cultural affairs with a legitimate request and penance to, for the piece to be removed. So, if Denver, like all these people wanted to be removed, it had to be out there for at least five years before they could even petition to get it removed. Really? Yeah, because it's artwork. 
Yeah. In Denver, in, out west has a lot of these weird laws with artwork and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So where was I? I'm sorry. Only after the five-year waiting period could it be brought for the commission to be removed. No such petition had been brought forward since 2013's end. After the first five years of Lucifer being on display, the airport seemed to be none will be brought forward altogether. So right at the beginning, there was a whole bunch of people out crying about it. And then by the five-year waiting period, everybody just kind of like, gone. well, it's, yeah. it's, it's a part of, you know, it's there. Yeah. It's become part of the terrain now. So Blue Sphere is here to stay. He might even be grown to residents more regularly at the airport who have been put off by his, his ceaseless gaze and could seek to uproot him. Besides that, it looked like great art piece. Lucifer has at least been able to get people at Denver talking again of what public art should and should not be. <laughs> so that's what uh, a lot of people said was positive and negative about it is like, what is acceptable for these giant public art pieces? Right. And because nobody like Denver has laws like protecting all this art. Mm-hmm. They got a giant puckered butthole of a horse. <laughs> a veiny puckered butthole. So, yeah, Blucifer is at least to get people talking. <laughs> and an important decision of the city residents to have more people flock to the city, and it grew its fun, or by funding for local artists and art commissions. Uh, to kind of, It's just getting more money into the art scene, right. is what they're saying. Right. Uh, yeah, what do you think so far about Blucifer? Uh, um, no, sir. I don't like it. So, Blucifer uh, hurt Lewis's son. Another piece fell on him. Mm-hmm. He ended up going to the hospital, and he was fine. Uh, Lewis's son had long-term health effects. From this? Yeah. I can't remember. It was the race. I couldn't find this very well. The race car driver or the bull rider. One of them had long-term health effects after messing with Lucifer. Yeah. Or the bull rider. The race car. It's just so weird. It's just <laughs> the hodgepodge of people they got it's, to finish this thing. The whole thing around this is just weird from beginning to end. So... Anything I talk about Lucifer before I move on to the next insane thing? Thing, yeah. I mean, not. No, I think we covered it pretty thoroughly. So as I move away down this list, they kind of generally get less provable till the very end, and then I have one that has provable stuff. Okay, and it just goes down in crazy mm-hmm. town. Okay, because yeah, what do you? Okay, the connection to the military base. Okay. You wanted this so bad in episode one. You're right. And yes. So this so there was a military base here oh, previously. Yeah. A big one. Okay. What which what was it? It was an ordnance plant. What's that mean? Like the TNT plant of West Virginia. Okay. They built bombs. Oh, okay. Why is it always like explosive? Because you know why facilities? people don't break into them. I guess. Well, you have to it's an active minefield. Yeah. I guess. You so mean, let's get there. If they let's, leave everything. It's the Lorry Field uh, airport, or military base. So here we go. You ready for this? Yeah. Lorry Field. Uh, so Lorry Field Base Facility, nicknamed the Jackie Robinson Field. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. And now it has like a Lorry Sports Complex and all this stuff. Yeah. So the site, the Lorry Air Force Base, is part of the Air Force Training Command, the ATC, located in Aurora in Denver, Colorado. It was built in 1937 to 1941. It was in use from 1938 to 1994. 38 to 1994? 38 wait. to 1994. Didn't they start? That, don't ask questions. Wait, 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 wait. Before they started the commission for the airport in 1990, right? Don't ask questions. So within those four years, they were still an active military base? Shh, baby girl. The airfield was only active, though, from 1938 to 1966. So if you look at this connection to the Denver airport, they say that it was, I know it was an, it was a domain of base because it was closed down in 1966. Yeah. No, just the, the airfield was, yeah. was closed down. The base that's built into the site. So, you know, when you come into Colorado, into Denver airport, yeah. you see that big Mesa yeah. off to the side. It's in the Mesa. There's hmm. buildings attached to the side of that Mesa. That's the base. Okay. Wow. And it was a big underground facility, but we'll get to that baby girl. That's coming. Okay. <laughs> you weren't supposed to pick on that on that so fast. Well, I'm paying attention when it comes to military involved. So yeah, it was a former United States Air Force uh, training base during World War II. United States Air Force used it as a training base during the Cold War as well. It served as an initial 1955 to 1958 site for the U.S. Force Academy, uh, and then it was U.S. formally used for the defense site after all that. Okay. So its last use was a black budget defense site. Okay. So the city of uh, Denver and Aurora 
the Highlands are charted in 1859 territory. Uh, the original Lof, uh, Air, the Lowry, sorry, the Lowry, it's a weird word for me, Air Force Base, was an airfield consisting of property taken over the Colorado Army Na- National Guard, having a southern border along East 38th Avenue between Delari and Holly Street. Named the second uh, Lieutenant Francis Lowry, the only Colorado pilot killed in World War One. That's who it's named after. Mm. The only pilot killed, killed. in World War One. Pilots in World War One were much different than pilots in World War Two. Weren't they more? I mean, they were more... like gliders. Oh, okay, gotcha. They weren't gliders, but they were much more like a glider than they were a plane. Okay, like the Wright brothers are dropping doing air raids. Keep in mind, we went. If you believe it, we went from getting to the edge uh, of the atmosphere to the Wright brothers in sixty years. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. Anyways, yeah. So what do you want to know about this? That may be easier because I have a lot of information on this base. Just about the military base itself? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, what kind of work? It had tons. So here's the problem with this base. Yeah. Is it had tons of different uses by tons of different government organizations mm. over its long history. Hmm. Keep in mind, it had, you know, roughly a 70-year history. Run, before, yeah. yeah. Before they built a... A, a gigantic airport on top inter- of it, international airport on top of it. Mm-hmm. Technically, it's the wildlife area around the airport, but if you look at some of the old schematics, mm-hmm. definitely some of the underground bases ran under the what's now the airport. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what's some of your yeah? What's some of your, uh, your why, questions? Well, why under is it was it built underground first to house like so a lot of these so a lot of these uh, Colorado or these Western bases. We're built underground because of the heat. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, it was just easier to, like, it, it, we're not talking, like, hundreds of miles underground. You know, we're talking about, the, at least public knowledge, one to two stories underground. Right, yeah. Uh, so they'd have military hangars and the normal buildings on the ground, but for the big part of the base, it was put underground because of the heat of the Colorado desert. Right. So they could, it was easier to cool in the summer and keep warm in the winter because Colorado does get cold. Mm-hmm. Especially up this part of Colorado gets cold. Right, especially at night. Yeah. So it was much cheaper to insulate when right. you're using the rock to do it yourself. Which I don't understand why we don't regularly build homes that way like now. I know, I just don't get it. but Because it, it doesn't, it, you have to build something really big to make it cheap. What? For the drilling, because the rock layer is so, like, on surface layer out here. Yeah. That, to be, like, you're going to have all this heavy machinery you have to get to remove the rock and carve it out and stuff like that. So if you're building a house, you're, you know, you're talking about building a house this size for a million dollars. Hmm. Well, this size. That's what I'm saying. Oh, for this a, size, yeah. For, for a civilian, it doesn't make a lot of financial sense. Hmm. For a large infrastructure, sure. You know, because hmm. it's, you know, it gets cheaper per square foot. I think long term, when you're paying that electric bill, it I don't will. think it's ever gonna to get one of these it giant will. drill rigs out there to well, go not through where, not rock. Where we live. We live. I'm talking out here. Oh, out there, yeah. That's, I guess that's different. Yeah, I don't know. They, I don't know. They got well, the, military is probably cheaper. They got technology to carve that up like it's nothing. Probably vaporize it all the dust. So the Lowry Air Force Base was designated on in 1948 uh, as established as the training ground, organized under the. 350 or oh my gosh 34 15th technical training wing i hate military jargon yeah i just huh. hate it hate it hate it because it's basically this base has an extremely long career with the air force being used from pretty much every large war from world war one on as being trained here that's great. a lot of these bomber pilots are trained here uh there's some evidence the guys with the nukes were trained out here so so it's a big training facility as well yeah Okay, and it also did uh, house ordinance. Right, right. You said so. That, it wasn't yeah. me. It wasn't making ordinance like TNT. It was holding. It was holding all of it. Yeah. It was also the Air Intelligence Training Center, not to be Jeez. confused with the Air Technical Intelligence Training Center. So it's been different a place. A training facility for a lot of different organizations mm-hmm. within our military and our government. Uh, the Defense Department had a sign that reasonable that the DOD Air Intelligence Training Grounds on this. So that was for everything for training from photography to radar to infrared inspections for the Air Force. That's so weird. So basically the Air Force is like CIA was being trained here. Yeah. And why 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 uh centralize all this tra- different types of training in this one area or location? It's almost like something was there that's revealing all this information. After it was basically the CIA's training ground. It was also used as the USAF School for Applied Aerosciences. So Air Force. Yes. Uh, and that was in 1972. Dang. 
Uh, it also had a big part of the uh, the ICBM peacekeeping training. Okay. The peacekeepers. International wait wait intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missiles. missiles. Yeah. Uh, they were all housed here. Oh and my! Being trained. Gosh. So you were asking about the inter- what they were being stored underground? Right. Oh. ICBMs. Yeah, those are, those are pretty... A lot of ICBMs. And those are big, aren't they? Like, those yeah, are no, gigantic. They're, like, small plane size. Yeah. Uh, they just... Because they... Yeah, they go... Yeah, it's what... If you're going to shoot something at Russia, this is what you're shooting. Those are the things they need the two keys at the same time to turn, right? Not quite. Oh, okay. Not quite. You're thinking about pretty, probably a couple sizes up. Or is this the thing that... And then we have a weird science that they accidentally summoned up through the floor. Uh, so, the, yeah, the peacekeepers. Uh, these are the things that you launch to kind of knock nukes out of the air. Oh, Okay. I thought these are the things you just launched to flatten cities. Oh, yeah, they do that too. Okay. But it's more like a peacekeeper. What it comes from is like using to hit a nuke. Right. And knock it, like blow it up in, in the air. Before it comes down here. Yeah. yeah. Questions about that? Gosh, no, it's insane. This is all. And you think they just like cleared all this out? No, I got the closure stuff. That's the next thing we're going to do. Okay. So uh, the closure, the Buckley Annex was the remaining military installation after the whole base transfer from the lower E8. So basically in 2006, 2006 was the closure of the military base. Uh, but what was left was the Buckley Annex. Which is? Just a small part of it. Like there wasn't like it was uh, by 2006, it had pretty much been chopped down. A lot of the space was eaten by the Denver airport. Okay. And this is the, the big building on the side of the cliff you see. Okay. So this is one of the buildings that they left for military? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Lori, yeah, it's the Lori Air Force Base in 2006, the year that the USGS listed the closure for the Lori Air Force Base in the uh, Geographic Names Information System. In 2007, the annex of 70 acres for the Denver International Air Force Base was planned for the closure. The last remaining Air Force facility at Lori was the Air Force Reserve Personnel Center, which uh, was moved to the, the Buckley Air Force Base later. Uh, the Buckley annexed the whole base, transferring it in 2012 in the final stages of the cleanup of the base and the annex. So basically, it was all being annexed for another military installation. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's what the annex was. It was underway by 2013. Most of the bases now, Lorry, Denver, neighborhoods, and two hangars are used for wings uh, for the Rocky Air Force and Museum Center. The former building and the 1949 Big Bear Ice Rink was a part of the military base. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, basically, a lot of the bases now is being used by both the International Airport and the local, the locals. Okay. Uh, the in, the underground stuff is supposedly all closed up and filled in with concrete. Supposedly. No, it's not. I'm just reading. I know, but I'm just, and I'm just letting everyone know. Uh, the dormitories in the former medical buildings on the east side of the base are now owned by the state as a part of the Higher Education and Technical Training Campus. Uh, the last remnants of the military facility from Lowry Base is the Defense Finance and Accounting Systems Financial Center, uh, which is just, it's a part of the, it's basically the counting center for the military. Right. For the budgeting system. Wait, for the military or for the airport? No, for, for the military, for the for the Air, the Air Force. Oh, okay. It's also right down the street from the new capital of the Space Force. No, come on. Why do we need a space force? We don't need a space force. We have the air force. <laughs> we don't need it. Just, but go on. That's pretty much it. I mean, basically, we could spend another hour and a half of just diving into all the pe- people have used this base. Yeah, but uh, it's it was a, lot. a highly trafficked military base, which is crazy. I didn't know all that history. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's and, still there, so you can see the buildings. Yeah, uh, but some of the buildings, like I said, are being used by public, like the Big Bear Ice Rink. Right. Yeah. Is one of the military hangars. Okay. They did turn into an ice rink? Yeah. That's pretty sweet, actually. Mm-hmm. I kind of would like to go there. All right. So before we get on to the crazy stuff, I want to talk about <laughs> the DA, the DEA, or the D, oh my gosh, the Denver International Airport. DIA. Stuff that they're feeding into the public with the signage. Okay. Uh, they have been doing a lot to kind of, they, Lean, yeah. they leaned heavily into this. So the first sign has a green alien that looks kind of like a gray, but he's green. And it says, yes, the DIA has got some secrets. It's this giant sign. And it says, since the airport's opening in 1995, there have been endless rumors and theories. People say our underground tunnels lead to the secret meeting facilities for the New World elites. 
or blue horse is thought to be cursed, and some believe we are connected to the New World Order, the Freemasons, and the Lizard People. And that's all the sign says. Wow. And it has a link to their website to learn the truth. Did we go to that? Should we go to that link? Oh, I've gone to it. It's just saying that we're not. We're not what? Connected to any of these. Oh. So it's just a big mm-hmm. r- big runaround. Yes. Okay. But it has a gray, and it says all this stuff. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is the lizard people signage. Okay. Why? Why? Uh, and it says, what are we doing? It's all about the new construction and stuff like that. What are we doing under this construction? We're adding amazing new restaurants and bars. We're building the Illuminati's new headquarters. And we're remodeling the lizard people's lair. Hmm. Literally, there's these signs and other similar ones are like this everywhere. And I'm trying to wrap my mind around, like, why embrace it? Gosh, yeah, okay. Yeah, those are weird signs. Why embrace it or why even, like, give it any attention or light? It's odd. It's odd if it's just all, like, made up stuff, you know? It's, it's just, I don't know. Because you don't normally, I don't know. This it's just, I can't wrap my, I can't make sense of it yet. So, the next things we're going to talk about are a lot smaller. I don't have tons on them. Okay. There's just, just a tons of theories. Where I'm going to hit you hot and fast with them. Okay. All right, the Nazis. What? These are just theories. Yes. Or the connections and uh, yes. Okay. So this isn't signage anymore. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, we're going to hot. I have a whole bunch of these little ones. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Nazis. Nazis. They, the Nazi runway models. So one of the most prevailing theories is the runways at the DIA are arranged to form swastikas as a tribute to the fascist New World Order. As seen below, in which I have a picture I'll try to remember, all their runways make swastikas. Yep. I've seen this. This is not like, and some of them are a little harder to draw, like a little harder to make, like they're off-centered and stuff like that. Other ones, there's tons of just normal swastikas. Perfect, yeah. Perfect, perfectly made ones. And I wonder, too, like, with the swastika symbol, you know, its history, you know, being, uh, whether it's a symbol for good or as more modernly, it's, you know, viewed as a symbol so for... So, like, we, like we've talked about in the show before, uh, the swastika, that Hitler took the swastika from the Boy Scouts of America, specifically. Yeah. Because yeah. the Boy Scouts of America were using it as their symbol. Right. And Hitler actually loved the Boy Scouts of America, and he wanted to show the rest of the German youth that see that they are part, they're falling behind us. It was used for, he used it for propaganda. Because mm, okay. he could show videos of the Boy Scouts of America doing, like, uh, their salutes and their right, stuff. Yeah. And they looked, like, he modeled a lot of the Nazi order off of that, because at that time, Germany loved America. Mm-hmm. Thought they were the shining star of the world, which at that time, they pretty much were. Mm-hmm. So he used the Boy Scouts of America to kind of help use that as propaganda, reversing it. Interesting. Saying, see, they love our ideas so much, they're adopting them. Yeah. And then, but then, then there's also the, you know, the ties they were into like that. India. Tibet yeah. And, yeah. So there's a so lot of stuff, but that's just, the most common belief that where Hitler took it from. Gotcha. Because he loved the Boy Scouts of America as far as that, using them for propaganda. Bro, yeah. Anything prop- you can use for propaganda, you're going to do. For sure. So what are your thoughts on this? Um, I mean, it. I don't have a whole lot more than that. They do make a lot of swastikas, but to be fair, a swastika is in this window. Well, like the framing of this right, window. Right, exactly. Like, That's you can find a swastika in anything about, with hard lines. Just about anywhere, yeah, if you're really looking for it. I mean, there are, shoot, you can find like carpet designs in like big, I don't know, anywhere. And My like mom seen, got rid of a carpet when we were kids because it had swastikas on it. Right, yeah, and it's just like the design. And I pointed it out, and I think I was like 11. I'm yeah. like, Mom, there's swastikas on this carpet. It's a brand new carpet. She threw it rug, out. A rug. A rug, yeah, right. They throw a rug. Yeah, and she bought, it was like a $300 rug she just gave away. Yeah, wow. Because that swastikas on it. Yeah, I don't and know. To be fair, that when they had like bright red swastikas, yeah, they were swastikas. Yeah, I just don't think anybody who designed it really realized what they were putting yeah. together. Because it's a fun shape. I mean, it's just yeah. And I just, I just don't know because the full meaning behind the symbol, we just don't really it know. Really, it's really with the symbolage. It's what culture you pick. Right. Exactly. So you know where this one falls. It could just be more coincidence than anything. Yeah. I'm not looking too much into that one. So I just have this little thing called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It's okay. a film. You've heard of it, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but not that Close Encounters. One of the stranger and more easily dismissed claims being that the anonymous individual watching or rewatching the 1977 Steven Spielberg classic Close Encounters of the Third Kind, in the film, a mysterious broadcast 
purportedly reveals the, the uh, coordinates of the Denver or the, the Devil's Tower in Wyoming, landmark that is prevailing in this theory. However, for some unknown reason, the coordinates don't actually match that location landmark. Years later, the mysterious and strange coordinates that was revealed actually indicate the future location of the Denver International Airport. That's really weird. Dozens of years before the construction even began in the airport yeah. base was even picked. Yeah, that's really weird. Now, let's say that uh, he picked it because the military base that was there. Right. But why? Because uh, the oh, We'll get to it. There's a lot of connections to Area 51. Nearby, yeah. No, that... That military base in Area 51. What? That they have a lot of connections yeah, together? Yeah, Air Force Base have a lot of connections to Area 51. But it makes sense. It makes sense. If, if this is a training facility for the Air Force and then all sorts of other uh, military uh, personnel and units and groups and other three-letter agency groups uh, that are training here, if it's a big training facility and then Area 51 supposedly has, you know, the downed, you know, uh, off-world, non-human origin ships, why not have this training facility that's not too far away? So if you scrutinize this a little more and you go to the actual direct coordinates, it's a little town called, or let me get to it, Alua, Aluta, Aluta, uh, in Weald County, which is right there. Um, is even closer. It's it's a lot, a lot closer to the DIA than the Devil's Tower. Yeah. Uh, but it's still like, 10 or 12 miles outside of the, the De- Denver National Airport. So it makes you, spot. Makes you it's wonder. It's just a weird thing. Makes you wonder if that little town, you know, has some connections to it as well. Right. Whether it be underground or just some sort of connection. I don't buy into this one a whole lot. I think there's a lot of coincidence. Mm-hmm. It's just, it is odd though. Yeah. It's an odd, because Spielberg does reveal things a lot in his films. He's mm-hmm. one of those Oh, directors. the government talks to him all the time. Yeah. So I, 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 I bet you there's something here. Because it in the movie I didn't quite catch was he was he supposed to be referencing the Devil's Tower, yes. but because it was sending all these people to the Devil's Tower to watch where the UFO came down. Yeah, so that's that's weird to pick out this location. And I mean, because he's not stupid, he wouldn't. The just, Devil's Tower is only seventy miles. It's not far yeah. from the international airport, but still, like that's far enough away, enough difference to where yeah. you can really say something. Right. Yeah. All right. What about the New World Order? All right, what about it? Few things uh, raise the heckles of conspiracy theories, not or quite as much as the phrase New World Order. A few organizations are frequently targeted by this conspiracy theory, as the Freemasons. Given their detection capstones, the airport not only permanently features a Mason uh, crest, but it also lists members of the New World Airport Commission. New World Airport Commission. That's what it's called. I believe you it should be. It should come to no surprise that the mere existence of this monument became a bit of an aha element for many of these conspiracy corners. It's like they do this stuff on purpose. So the Denver International Airport, it has its cap, its cornerstone, has the Freemason uh, symbolage on it. Like literally, it was made by the Freemasons, and uh, literally underneath this, it says "New World Airport Commission tributes," and it has four names. Which will, uh, including, most of these names are big companies. Okay. Is there one, like, individual name, though? We're not going to mention the big companies. Oh, does it start with a B? We're not going to mention the big companies. Does it start with a uh, L? We're not going to mention them. Okay. But there are big companies listed. Starts with a B, you want them, right? These are major companies. Yeah. So, one of the more prominent claims of the New World Air, or the New World Airport Commission, is that there is no such organization. What? It has never been, and there's not so secret code for being used, again, you guessed it, for nefarious, individualist New World Order. The problem with this theory is that the organization not only is a real thing, uh, we have here in Western history in the ge- our genealogical house, oh, sorry. So the big problem with this theory is that the organization is not only a real thing, but it, we had here at the Western History and Genealogical House 11 box of the Commission Archive documents, the very real but not so quite technical commission was formed by Charlie Annerbust, chair of the State Council of Arts and Humanities. Mm. To propose this organization was primarily to promote and arrange festivities for airport openings. And is such disband shortly after the airport was opened for business. <laughs> So they created this thing just for basically this airport. So it did exist. Yeah. 
and it got disbanded right after it was opened. Yeah, exactly. For the record, Mr. Ashtaban Ashtaban was a conductor of the Colorado Springs Sympathy and was named the coordinator of this uh, from the New World Order, or the from, for, from the New World, more commonly being called the New World Sympathy. Mm. Symph- I can, I can't, symphony. Symphony, okay. So he was a conductor of the symphony. Gotcha. He got chosen to run this festivity, the festivity committee to organize opening of big airports. Right. They opened this airport, then they disbanded. Yeah, this done. So they did it just for this. That's it. Yes. Okay. And with the New World Order, I mean, that's it's not a conspiracy theory. It's been it's openly talked about New World Order. I mean, our governments used it in their lingo. Um, UK's used it, governments used it in their lingo a lot. Um, the World Economic Forum has used it in their when they were talking about uh, what they want for the future, what they're playing, they always reference it as the New World Order. And I think there's a lot of confusion where some people believe New World Order is its own group, its own entity. I think it's more of just the new uh, system that they want to put humanity into to benefit, you know, to live off the backs of, you know, working class people. But it's just the the new wave of, the next program, the next system we're all going to be living in, which is, I think, you know, digital, you know, uh, entrapment, enslavement. Uh, I think that's what the new world order is more representing is that system. So let's talk about the capstone I just mentioned. Right, with the Mason symbol In on the it? Great Hall of the DIA, there is a plaque that, like I said, you know, that dedicates the airport. Uh, one you might think is the main contributor to the airport that has been the city of Denver, the state of Colorado. However, the names listed on the stone are contributing is an organization called, like we said, the New World Order Airport Commission. Uh, you might not seem odd to casual observers, like we said. So there is a time capsule in these. Okay. Nobody knows what's in them. Interesting. So it's not a public time capsule. When's it supposed to? When's it say when it's supposed to be opened? Doesn't say. Oh, okay. Every corner has one. Every wing. Has a cap or a cornerstone, a capstone. Uh, it has a time capsule and dedication plaque. That's odd. In addition to the capstone, there are some inscriptions on the floor of various locations of these terminals, which have aroused suspicions of some not so great internet sleuths. In many cases, there is claims that are these engravings of some secret uh, language that nobody outside of the fetid secret societies would know what it means. Most of these are actually Navajo language. Oh wow. Um, so there's the silver leaf and it says best to get what best to get is the word underneath. Oh, it. oh, I thought you were saying an English word. I was, I was no. Like, Wait, what? And it just literally transports to silver leaf. Okay. In Navajo language. Gotcha. Nobody knows why there's a silver maple leaf on the floor. Silver leaf. Huh? I mean, literally it's a silver maple leaff and then the word best to get. Yeah. Uh, there's another one that is bits to got. The mountain that is white is what it, it's, or more simply, the white mountain. These sound like a, they're translating in like sumo wrestler names. That's like what theirs all translate into stuff like this. Nihina Nichi, the Talo River. The translation of a name for a branch of the South Plaque River, which flows near the DIA. So that's a location that's right on the edge of the base or right on the edge of the airport. These are, these are uh, hidden treasure clues. We'll get to that. Hmm. Uh, Sinajit, the mountain scarred by the Navajo people, hmm. is said to be the eastern boundary of the, the mountain Blacko or the Blacko Peaks. Okay. In addition to the Navajo inscriptions, there is one item inscribed on the floor which has its quite a uh, fuss made about it, despite being arguably the least mysterious of the lot. I don't know about this. Once again, this is this article, not me. In an, uh, in an image of a mine cart... There is a cryptic letters A U A G inscribed within. Yes, you might be tempted to think that it gives the A U A G the chemical symbols for gold and silver. Yep, respectively. And the image is fairly uh, straightforward with acknowledgement of the Colorado's history of mining both gold and silver. Right. And you would be correct. However, that hasn't stopped people from being coming uh, in, with the insidious designs and raising alarm bells for people. They claim that is the description is a secret revealed by the meaning of the Illuminati, the reptilians of New World Order, will wipe out the bulk of humanity. The AU and the AG uh, refers to the variant uh, pathogens of the Australian uh, Argent. It's a disease. Okay. So they're saying that it's uh, it's basically saying that it's what's going to wipe out all these people is a weird disease. But why the minecart? 
Don't know. Maybe that's carrying the like disease. I said, some of these are just odd. Yeah. I mean, that's reach. I mean, maybe they could be on to something, but it seems a bit of a reach. Now, that's it I have for these little weird stuff. And they're everywhere. Yeah. And I, most of them are Navajo besides that one. Uh, and I, I guess, you know, they do look they do look very odd if you don't know Navajo. Yeah. But plenty of Navajo people have said, yeah, they're, they're Navajo. I wonder if you put them all together if there is some sort of message. But I'm sure somebody's done that. It seems to be mostly just locations from yeah. the nearby area. Right, yeah. Paying tribute to the area and the history. Like some prominent area locations yes. in the area. They're done besides the gold cart one. Yeah. Really doesn't I mean the gold cart one's kinda weird, but kinda not. Unless each of these areas represents like a different, you know, underground building or wing that they were doing different experiments in. Like maybe the maybe they were doing, you know, pathogen growing and testing in an old mine shaft that they harvested gold and silver out of it in the past. I, I don't I mean I'm doing it I now too. I think some of these may be just to throw people off the trail. Yeah. That Australian art agent is a, a is a very close cousin to hepatitis B. Okay. And the problem why it kills a lot of people is it gets diagnosed and treated as hepatitis B. Oh, but it's not that. It's not so hepatitis not really... B so then it kills them. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay. All right. This one may be one you didn't know about. Ooh. Did you know Anubis is there? Anubis? He's there? Yeah. Where? At, at, on the airport grounds. A 20-foot-tall Anubis is on the airport grounds. Gosh, now i got to look this up. So still another sculpture that has gained the ire of the internet is a 20-foot-tall sc- sculpture of Anubis, the Egyptian god of death. Mm-hmm. The piece was erected in June 2010. It was part of the advertising campaign for the Denver Airport or Denver Art Museum as a traveling King Tut exhibit was on display in June of 2010 all through January of 2011. The piece was paid for by private funds and was removed after the exhibit left town. Nevertheless, a sculpture infringed on many lives on the uh, depicted scrub or in the depicted suburbs of the internet and were still taunted as evidence of the airport's malevolent nature. Now, so it does say King Tut on the bottom. It's giant here. I got a picture for you. Oh, yeah. I see it. It's a giant new that says right King Tut. What do you think about that? Um, that is, well, I don't know why it, it says King Tut there at the airport. Yeah, on the base. D- okay. D- uh, that's weird. It's- Did you not hear what I just said, though? What? Okay, what? About the King Tut Art Museum is it a bit. This well, was done as a part of the campaign. So they put Anubis, the god of death, on. Oh, but it so was they're advertising. The, yes. Oh, 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 okay. Gotcha, gotcha. It's still weird. Like It's weird, but yeah. But if you didn't know what it was advertising and you right. just seen it in the middle of the airport and you're like. No, it's a, it's not even. What the heck is that? And it's out. Like, it's outside in the runways and stuff area. Yeah. Like, it's not even inside. Like, they're just having Anubis out sitting out there. And it's You see tall. it when you're coming down. Yeah. It's 22 foot tall. You see it when you're landing. It's so tall. It's so big. Um, that's still like, why at the airport? That is weird. It's very weird. And he's holding like that little staff thing too. Oh, this is just strange. It's just like, why bring, I don't See, know. that's why I said at the beginning of episode one is that Denver airport, I think feeds into a lot of it to bury the rest. Yeah. They create these things. That I don't think, that, I don't think this has anything to do with anything. It's just divert. It's, yeah, just to be weird. It's just to be weird to feed into the weird. Muddy the waters. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at the the images of this. This is nowhere near the detail and the, uh, I don't know what, the craftsmanship that oh, went into like, the horse. No, it's like a giant paper mache. Oh, there it is. It says King Tut. Yeah. It's not, it's, I mean, it looks fine. Like it was it, falling apart by the time they took it out. Oh, it's gone now? Yeah, it only lasted a year. Oh, okay. Still, that's so weird. All right, ready for the next thing? Yes. The grinning gargoyles. Ooh. Did you see these while you were there? I, um, no, I didn't notice these, but I ever when I've been Googling like pictures and stuff since we've been doing this episode, and the last one too, the gargoyles kept popping up. So compared to Tungman's giant colorful murals and Sweetman's large-scale photos, it might be easily to miss these two small gargoyles set atop the columns in the east and west baggage claim areas. So the historically gargoyles were added to buildings to protect people inside from evil spirits. Uh, the, the Denver International Airport's pair, collectively titled Notre Denver, mm. you get it? Like Notre Dame? Yeah. Yeah. Is no different. Grinning down and arri- as on arriving passengers, they are there to help ensure the safety arrival of luggage. 
Mm, they are outside the baggage claims. Actually, I do remember. I think I've seen one. Although gargoyles are a part of religious uh, architects from centuries, most famously the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, of which the, the Denver National Airport gargoyles are named, some visitors have viewed the pair as a harbinger of evil and rather than a notable or noble protector. Hmm. So that's what gargoyles, if you want to look into like the most history of them, gargoyles were t- two folds designed for something. Uh, they were designed to like they he, like the Arthur said ward off evil, right? Also to hide water spouts. Yeah, and they actually looked really. Uh, if you see them, like they're ones that are still functioning, uh, you know, in France or wherever, I don't know. They actually look really neat. Seeing the water actually pour off mm-hmm. them, it looked really cool. And some of them are less scary than others. You know, yeah. it's really about the architect's individual, you know, right. aspect of a gargoyle. Some of them are freaky. Some of them are just goofy. Like, some of them funny look like looking. big chickens and stuff yeah. like that. Like. And some of them are really weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I've seen some that are... Uh, I wouldn't want to hang up in my house. The things that they're doing is just doing some weird stuff. So what do you think about these gargoyles? Um, the gargoyles, I, I just don't know. Everybody has to pass in between them, which is weird hmm. to me. That is strange, yeah. I wonder if, like, what gargoyles represent, if they were even real at some point, or if they're just kind of like those... Or if they're kind of like, you know, interdimensional, you know, like spiritual things that are kind of always around us. And this is like their physical form. You know, if, if, if something were to manifest, you know, a, a demon were to manifest itself into physical form here, if that's, if it would take the form of looking like a gargoyle. That's kind of what I always pictured. Just these did lower you, did, dimensional beings. So our next little thing. Did you see the portal to hell when you were there? I don't think I did, no. So right in the center of the main like terminal, like when you're leaving and coming in, okay. there's a little circle of stuff. Let me look. Now yeah. I got to look. Cause I, I'm trying to think when I... Well, it's 2023 right now as we sit here and record this. The last time I was in the Denver International Airport was probably like 2018. So I couldn't find any reasoning for the inscriptions. Like this is one of the ones that's really weird. Okay. And everybody has to walk through this circle mostly. Okay. So there's a lot of theories that this is a portal to hell. And it's some kind of ritual. And having all these massive amounts of people walk over the ritual site is either cursing them or giving the ritual power. Interesting, yeah. Or all kinds of stuff. I'm trying to find a pic. It's, this one's harder to find a picture of. This is a weird one. This is one of the ones I think is more real. Yeah. Because uh, it's really hidden. I do know, like... like s- I couldn't really find transcriptions of what it says. Yeah. I only found one picture of it. It's hmm. weird. I'd have to. I wish I could do it just like search back and look through my eyes. You know, it's like was, a design in the floor. Yeah, and I, I'm trying to remember. I know like when the I, other little inscriptions that are hidden around everywhere. Right, all, all that stuff. When my experience going through the airport, I just from what I can remember, when you're going through, you know, this, you know how you have to go through security and baggage, you know, all that stuff first. Every single person is funneled into this one like small. Not small, but into one, like, big area where you're doing, like, the Cedar Point, you know, amusement park ride queues where you're going back and forth, back and forth, up and down. But it's all in, like, this one centralized area where everybody is funneled into. And then once you push through that, then you're on to your separate terminals. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, so it's a portal to hell. And what any any time I've been to— Or some kind of ritual. That's where I think more is more accurate. I think the Portal of Hell is just the catchy name. Yeah. I think it's some kind of ritual site. I could believe it. And that they're using all the humans passing through as a part of, like, a, a battery or a catalyst. Interesting. I, I could believe it. Because you're not supposed to enter, like, when you, you do ritual magic, you're not supposed to enter the ritual circles and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I think there's something with that. It's either putting bad juju on people hmm. or something. Or whatever it is. This is why your movement. hell fell out. My what? That's why your hair fell out. Psh, and then that was that happened. Well, it started well beyond before I went there. I think the first time I ever went to the Denver this, International Airport was probably twenty. Okay, twenty. So it has to be after 2012. 2013, 2014 probably. That's when you started getting shorter. Oh yeah, is that it what used happened? To be six foot five. Gosh, the good old days. And every time you go past it, it steals one of your vertebra. Gosh, I'm like, I was like a giraffe at one point. Just plex went out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a, quite the change. Man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, what just happened? Drop an inch and a half. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my All gosh. All right. We're getting ready to get into some of the—, the we're, we're getting towards the end. We're already an hour in, and we still got, like, four more things. Oh, gosh. Okay. But some of these are really big. Yeah. Are we? Is this going to be a three-parter? 
No, we're going to finish it up. Okay. It's going to be like an hour and a half. So there's a lot more with the hit, like the conspiracies of these different New World Order, these different mega organizations, these secret societies, whatever you want to call them. I, there's just so much. And we, I don't want to keep rehashing the same stuff, but everybody that thinks that they know what New World Order, who's going to run it, yeah, can find their stuff here. Okay. And point to their group. Okay. Whether it's the Freemasons or the Illuminati or the, this like reptilians the, or the, the, there's all this like weird stuff. Bug and, people. No, then there is a mural with a bug person in it. Elon, Elon, or uh, friends at the other show. Elaine. Elaine. Elaine Musk. Husk. Elaine Mu- Husk. Yeah. So yeah, that's his wife, right? Yeah, probably. So I mean, before we get into that, let's talk about the thing I've been putting off this whole time. Okay. The underground. Are you ready to get into this? So the construction of the airport itself was rife with problems and setbacks, triggering an orderly onset compromise of claims. One of the first was that the various problems with the design, the construction wild widely over budget and it being badly timed metalworks a strike. Uh, were all due to the fact that the facility was being built on an ancient Native American burial ground. <laughs> Note that not no tribe or native organization had ever made claims to this effect. No tribe put up a fight. Nobody ever yeah. said that there was anything here, but that is one of the claims. So they're just saying that. Yes. So they're saying that basically to cover that it was actually built on a military base. And then there is tons of archaeological evidence suggesting that while this may have been a really prominent hunting ground, there's no evidence that anybody had ever buried anybody here. Okay. Okay. Didn't make a lot of sense. So why even, yeah, why even put that out there in the first place? Mm-hmm. Odd. I think that comes more from the construction workers because uh, there was a lot of Navajo in the area. Uh huh. And I think the construction workers were saying that they were kind of blaming all their problems on this. On them. Okay. On the, native, the Navajo burial ground. Not to so, mention uh, the whole uh, military base. Base that's doing weird experiments and training uh, there the whole for what, uh, 30 years. Mm-hmm. So just saying that that's kind of their big thing. Okay. While the airport itself was home to a segmented amount of far fetched misinformation, says this author, there's also a great degree of speculation as to what lies beneath the airport. One claims in the digital known to the runways, there's also secret runways buried uh, just below the surface, which extend an extra four to five miles each. When the time comes, uh, they can quickly be uncovered for massive planes carrying the, the global elites to land safely to ensure that there is quickly uh, ushered in for safety underground bunkers. Mm. Now, I've got to mention a woman here in a minute, and we're going to talk about her later. So just hang on to the name. Okay. But these giant... So if you look from space, you can kind of see that the runways extend far past what they look like. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, And there's like these openings. So basically what would happen is these planes would land and land underground. Just keep going. Yeah, so like there'd be a little bit of a drop. Yeah. Like the door would open up on the very end, and they'd go underground and then land in the ground. There is physical evidence of these things existing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so accor- and, and according to many unnamed anomalous sources, there's vast underground complexes beneath the DIA. So I want to defute, or refute that for a second. We know there was giant mass underground. Well, there's pictures of them. Like, look, there's a picture like right there, three stories yeah. underground. This is a picture of two stories underground. Yeah. Like, there's no... It exists. Right. It's not... The it's underground some facility exists. Yeah. They just abandon it because uh, they said, that's the, the giant octopus. Like, that's what I'm showing Jay a picture of. The baggage claim octopus that never worked. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, it actually ate a guy. What? Yeah. Remember, we talked about that last episode. No, oh, yeah. That's right. That's it right. ate a guy. Yeah. Uh, and then they'd be like, you know what? This is stupid. Let's let's unplug this. As Jerry's sliding down and being ripped apart by the rollers. <laughs> you know, it's like, let's just His not. Foot comes out the other let's end. Let's just let people do the baggage. Yeah, they'll be fine. The gargoyles will watch over <laughs> the gar- it. Let's put up some gargoyles in that corner and that yeah. corner. Then they'll be fine. Because Jerry's spirit's not very happy. No. <laughs> uh, so various conspiracies have popped up about this. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about a lady named Alex here in a bit. But... These uh, giant underground bunkers are one of those big theories. And like I said, the, you know, it was three years over construction, three times over budget. You know, we're talking billions of dollars. And year, billions years. Billions of dollars in three years over budget. Yes. And most of the first three years were just digging the underground part. The last two years were building the actual airport. 
Hmm, okay. So, yeah, that's odd. That's very odd. But, yeah, no, you can... These giant underground bases are crazy. And I'm going to talk about some unsubstantiated stories at the very end. And I'm I'm looking for these uh, openings and on the map right now as we as we speak. But you can find the actual document to show about this underground stuff. Uh, yeah, so there's no... Like, it's just crazy to me that you hear some of the anti-conspiracy theory people or anti-whatever, yeah. anti, you know, pro-establishment, talk about, like, how crazy it is that people say there's underground. And then, like, I'm, I have the paper right here, on, you know, blown up, showing that, yes, they... Had are, them. Like, look, this is a report from four years ago yeah. talking about the uh, safety surveys of the underground area. Mm. So, yeah, no, no, they don't exist. But it's just, like, why? Why fight it? And... It's there. It's all documented. There's a lot of suggestions that the, the Denver International Airport is actually a dump. A what? A dump. Oh. A deep, deep underground, underground military base. Yep. And that that's that they're the ones promoting all the strange connections to keep it from just being understand that it's a military installation still. Keep in mind, on the corner of it was a big military Air Force ins- installation. Right. Exactly. And it had underground places. So some people think that the three years and the, the over budget thing was taken care of by the military. And it was all woke because if you watch some of the questioning of stuff, no questions ever got answers and no questions ever got pushed too hard. Right. No one really ever cared. It didn't really affect them. Because people it, would ask about it and stuff yeah. like that. Nobody really answered, but nobody would push too hard. Too hard, yeah. And it really seems to be that there may have been some government connections in the wings. That makes sense. Saying, hey, you know, we want to we wanna expand this base, but it were too close. Denver got too close to us. Mm. And we don't want everybody to know about this base. You know, they will, you, there should be some secrecy in the government against other governments for our protection. So they're using that as being like, we're going to help finance and take care of the airport on top, help bring some money to Denver. Right. But we need the underground facility. And they probably, you know, it probably helped them having an airport right there where they can ship stuff right into them. Yes. Like just right there to them. So there's all this, and once again, remember, the military base had underground tunnels. Right, exactly. Leading Pre- towards where the Denver airport is. Exactly. So there's a lot of theories that this is. This is one that I kind of buy in when we talk about theories at the end. Yeah. This is one that I kind of subscribe to, that there's not a lot of the weird stuff that, because the weird stuff is being propagated so heavily mm-hmm. that I'm thinking that it may just be a military base. Doing weird experiments. And they might even be doing that weird experiments. I'm not saying, like, no, they're not, but yeah. they may have a guy that dresses up as a lizard that if you accidentally get down there, he just chases you out. Yeah. And nobody's going to believe you. Or they actually have lizards down there that eat people. I mean, there is that, too. <laughs> it could be Dulce. <laughs> right, yeah. I wonder, too, though, you said, you know, the tunnels are going from the military base, you know, kind of bouts where it was, to the area where the airport is. I wonder, too, um, you know, that town that Spielberg kind of coordinated to in his movie i wonder if you know There's that town is part of the ex- to it. yeah part of the experiments i wonder if they have this if it's one of those towns that has you know the basements that has the tunnels you know leading to each house that are connecting each house you know where they're doing like those weird experiments to each family that's living there unbeknownst to most of the family members that live there i don't know so another article that covers this is there have long been outspoken people who have claimed that they've gone down to these tunnels and layers. Yep, I've heard some of these stories. Alex Christopher, which is a lady, Mm -hmm. is the famous, most famous one. It's probably the one I know, yeah. Uh, So the DIA has yet to finish these tunnels. In this article, the Westworld magazine author talks to Alex Christopher, which we'll talk about in a minute. We'll actually go over their interview. Nice, okay. Uh, An older woman who has the heart for this conspiracy. She's the one that's been pushing this, this theory heavily. Uh, and once again, it's hard because it gets lost in the conspiracy. Right. That that there are tunnels. Right. There are buildings. There are stuff underground. Like there's pictures. There's the articles. There's the actual like schematics you can find. Right. It's just what it's going on in there. Yes, is and the what, argument. Mm-hmm. But when people say that it's lizard people eating children, whether that's real or not, right. Immediately that just discredits everything. It's hard so to So people kind of forget that no, the underground part is real. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that's a big problem with this theory, but not as in as in a problem with the theory, as a problem that explaining yes, it. Yes, yes. So just after the airport was built, she met with people at the conference in Denver who took her down there, and later she returned with her friend Phil. 
After this, her friend Phil turned up dead from apparently a suicide. Shot in the head twice. Twice, yeah. No, that didn't really happen, but what was it? No, he shot himself in the head twice. No, are you kidding me? I thought you were joking. No. That's really how he died? Yes. So, I don't know how he died. I knew you were lying. So, obviously, Why fellow you do theorists that? are skeptical about this, considering that uh, many consider this an assassination. Uh, Christopher went silent for several years, but recently started talking about it, and she's been working on a new film. Mm, interesting. So after her friend died, so she was talking, she was telling everybody about all of the stuff she's seen under the base. And then her friend dies. And then her friend died uh, under mysterious circumstances. I did look into that. Yeah, okay. Uh, the suicide, I don't think, there's not like a lot of information on the suicide. I don't think Colorado is one of those states they have to like put all that out there. Okay. So it's not like Ohio where I can I can find how everybody died. Right, exactly. Or Florida, you know, where it's easier. But, you know, Colorado is one of those states where it just he died of suicide. It's weird. Odd circumstances. And then she went silent, you know, for many years and then came out and said, you know, she uh, hooked up with a media company. I think whether you want to believe her or not, if you want to be that she's telling the truth, it could be like Bob Lazar if you believe him. Mm -hmm. That he didn't want to outspeak until he came out with a tape saying I'm not suicidal, you know, if you know, right. here's all the names if I end up dead. Safety measures. Yeah, and so she hooked up with a media company that probably did the same thing. Mm -hmm. So also while the airport was being built, there were, and this is documented. What I'm about to say is documented. Okay? N noted. All Okay, also while the airport was being built, there were five buildings that were below the ground, but for some reason needed to be abandoned completely. Okay. Instead of destroying them, uh, another infrastructure was just built on top of them leading many to wonder why it was going on with these buildings underneath the ground level. Yeah, just build on top of it. That's it. There was, and these buildings were massive. Yeah. The one was five stories deep. Which is huge. 50 to 60 feet underground. Yeah. And they're like, they closed them off and just, and built, just built on top of it. Built them. a building on top of it. Easy. What do you think of that? Um, I think that's, I, I believe they did it. I don't believe they're closed off. I don't think they're closed off whatsoever. I think they're probably closed off to us. Well, for sure that, yeah. Or are they? So I'm not going to read Alex's full transcription because we're well over our hour-ish mark that we yeah. normally shoot for. Yeah. Because it's a very long interview. Is I will try to put the link. Is she the lady that supposedly got lost down yes. there and was getting chased? No, I got that next. Okay. So this is the lady that got took shown down there. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Her and her friend willingly, they took her. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, uh, she was there at a big conference, like a military conference and stuff like that. Okay. Uh so, yeah, and she did a bunch of interviews, and I'll try to remember to put the link uh, for the interview below. Uh, she was a part of the Montauk Project wow. and stuff like that. So she knows she's, she was in military circles. Yeah. And they kind of showed her down the space. Uh, she She's seen some weird stuff. But what she said is uh, basically they got shown around as an active basically military base and stuff like that, and she was let out, and they just were talking about it. They thought it was kind of common knowledge, and then her friend committed suicide. Yeah. And then she got some scary calls. Oh, yeah. So we may do a whole episode on Alex later in the in the future because uh, her work with Dumbs and stuff like that, her work with the Montauk Project, mm -hmm. she did a lot. Okay. And then she's done a lot of research in the murals and stuff like that. Like, later we do her full interview, it would be probably another hour. Wow, okay. So what do you think? I mean, that's that's interesting. I think it's something we should definitely explore moving forward. Hey, look, I've been scrolling still through her interview. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe that's something we could do a a Patreon episode where we really dissect that whole interview and go and over And there's it. some names that I don't really feel comfortable sharing. She throws... Yeah. Uh, this last interview, she actually started using everybody's names, like generals Ooh. and military personnel and companies. Maybe we should hop on this for Patreon yeah. for future talks. For safety. Yeah. All right, so now I have a couple unsubstantiated stories. Okay. And it's the one you were just mentioning. Yeah. So this is the one I heard, and this is actually the one that funneled like the start into this for me. Okay. And uh, Bedtime Stories podcast did it a long time ago, and he had a link to it that's not active anymore. Okay. So the link's been fully, the page has fully been taken down. The dead internet. Yeah, and I can't find this story anywhere else. Yeah. So for everybody at home, this is an unsubstantiated story that I heard a long time ago that another podcast did that I, I respect a lot, this this podcast. And he had links for it. He had all of his research. And you go to it, and it's dead. 
Right. Yeah. I don't think that was him doing a dead link. No. I think it was probably the either the website was somebody stopped paying for it, mm-hmm. or you know, like Jay just said, the dead internet theory where the internet just kind of starts Eating deleting it. the excess stuff. Right. Yeah. You know, thinning stuff down that doesn't get used. Doesn't get used or isn't part of the narrative anymore. Mm, yeah. Whether you, know, it depends on which dead internet theory is. Just the internet just starts deleting. Right. Yeah. It's not conscious about it. It's just. It's just gone. Whenever stuff starts getting not used, it just starts goes. trimming the fat. Right. Yeah. So. Basically, this lady, uh, I have two stories. I have another one with a guy. Okay. Uh, so this lady ends up, she gets a layover, and she starts, there's parts of the, like, during the night that you, like, this base, like, people don't realize how big this airport is. Gigantic. So she kind of gets away from everybody, and this is, like, late 2000, or early 2000s, it's like, 13, 14. Uh, you may have been there when this happened. Could have been. Uh did you see a lady that looked very disgruntled yeah. screaming about lizards? Yeah, a lot of them. Oh, no, okay. I'm just kidding. I mean, no. It's Denver. Yeah, exactly. So she comes out. Uh, she 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 kind of goes finds one of these wings because she's not going to leave till the morning, right? And she goes finds one of these wings, and she starts sleeping and charging her phone and stuff like that. And she gets up and has to pee, and she wakes up and there's nobody around her. And she she went away from everybody, but not like there was people. Right. There's always people. Right. And there's nobody around her. And she gets kind of like, she feels kind of disoriented. She's trying to find a bathroom. And she ends up going down this, opening a door. She thought it was a bathroom and it closed behind her. There's no handle or nothing on her side. Okay. So she can't get out. So she's just kind of walking around, walking around. It's a trap. And she ends up going down a flight, like a little stairs, because that's the only way she can go. Long story, like from the outside looking in, she disappears. So... She's gone for at least three days. The Denver International Airport said she left the building. Yeah, they they claimed she wasn't even there. She like, left. She's no like, longer there. She went to a hotel and she left and she never came back. She didn't get lost. Uh, it took them forever to subpoena all of the video and they yeah. found her video of her walking down this hallway and disappearing. Yep. And showed that she never left. Right. So like three or four days later, uh, they find her. And depending on which version of the story you go with, they found her outside, like outside, still on the grounds, but outside running around like naked. Yeah. Or she came back into the airport, looked completely like a feral person naked, like screaming. Yeah. And her story was that she got down there and she got in the dark and she seen people and these monsters that were talking. And then one of the monsters started chasing her. Yeah. And when she got into this other area, it was wet and dark. Like there was no lights. And for two or three days, this thing was hunting her. And she could hear it, like, hissing and smelling for her. And she's in a wet, dark environment. And she had, like, almost trench foot symptoms and stuff like that from being in water. It was, like, standing in water. So weird. And she said it would get so close to her. And it was like it was toying with her. Yeah. It always knew she was there. And it would let her get away again. And then it would, you know, chase her. And nobody believed her. And Denver, the airport, got all kinds of, like, not any trouble, but all kinds of backlash because they said she left. They like, we have video proof of her leaving. Yeah. And all this stuff. And I don't know. It's just one of these stories. And there's, yeah. there's I think it really happened. I think, I think so too. I mean, and to a certain degree of it, I don't know. Maybe it, it didn't all happen as what we were told, but I remember hearing about this story and it was so weird. And you had seen the video evidence of her, like, you can see her in the, in the airport, the lady they're talking about, like, go in. Just like go. You behind. can't find that videos anymore. You can't. It's all gone. I remember. I remember seeing them. Like, I, no, it was real. I it was yeah, real. Exactly. And it's all gone. It's so weird. It's I mean, all gone. It is weird, but it's not weird. I'm not shocked yeah. at all. Not shocked. So I have another story. Yeah. And it's uh, one. You know, it's like a Reddit story or whatever. Okay. But a guy was supposedly uh, at the airport again. He got into an elevator. He hadn't been there. He's a business local, like business guy flying through the Denver airport constantly Mm -hmm. and he had used it he had got on a small like a smaller plane so he was using a terminal he'd never used before okay he went to the bathroom or he wanted to go to the bathroom but he found like this little elevator and there's no bathroom in his area so he's like i'll just go up or down a floor find one there find one so he goes and he'd never gone down before yeah so he's like okay i'll go down just see what's down there so he clicks the down button and this elevator is like way off and one of the like denver has all these weird little hallways that lead to nowhere. Yeah. And people get curious, you know, and he's bored. So he walks down, finds his elevator at the end of this hallway that's like this big, like zigzag hallway to nowhere. Yeah. He goes down 
and it's he's like it looks the same it looks the same as a normal terminal it's like nothing weird it's like but he's like it's weird it's underground but it looks like a terminal yeah and he's like it must just be an overflow terminal you know they don't use anymore or they were planning to use for if it got too busy upstairs yeah so he sees the bathroom and he goes in and he sits down in a stall and this thing like he can hear somebody walking in and it stands at the urinal next to his toilet and he sees it. He describes them as giant, like lizard feet or bird feet. Mm. And he said every time it stepped, it sounded just massive. Yeah. And it was kind of talking. And he said there had to be somebody else in the room it was talking to. Yeah. Or it was talking to me. Right. Thinking yeah. I was some, you know. And I didn't answer nothing like that. And it eventually left. And he said it freaked him out so bad he ran upstairs and he was t- telling people where he'd been and all every all airport security was telling him that, that place doesn't exist. Goes back to the airport. Like he finds the, he finds the uh the uh, elevator again yeah and the button's gone there's no down button there's no down button mm. interesting and it's one of those where it could be real could not could be just real. be yeah could just be a like a creepy pasta yeah. yeah but it's just an interesting more fun to the story yes so we're gonna take a pause because we forgot to do an ad break so this is way too late for an ad break but we're gonna be right back okay we're back. We're back from our break. I know that didn't seem like anything happened to you guys, but I had to get the, something queued up. So we're going to get into what's happening here. Okay. And I got some possibilities for you. But like I promised in the first episode, I actually know what's happening. Mm. I figured it out in my research. So I'm hoping I want to make this very clear, everybody. I'm not suicidal. DIA explained. I'm not suicidal. You're I, what? I'm not suicidal. You aren't? I'm not. I'm okay. not suicidal. You are not. Yes. Okay. If I die, it was because of this last thing on this list. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about some of the options. Well, uh, first basic one is it's a government base, like we kind of talked about. You right. know, the government base just kind of privately helped finance it, cover some stuff up because they needed more expansion underground. Yeah. And kind of used it as their own thing. What do you think about this one? That sounds plausible. Use the public's money, you know, to help. I think they used their money, and that's why it wasn't fought back too heavily. Oh, gotcha, okay. Because $4 billion for the city of Colorado, and nobody really cared. Right. Yeah, that's, it's that's probably because they weren't paying for it's it. It's a lot of money. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's not our money. It's black budget that. money. Yeah. You know, so what do you think about that? I mean, it still could be, I think, I think very well uh, a possibility. This is my second runner-up. Yeah. That's my number two spot. Okay, but let's just get to the juicy stuff. Alien base. Oh, is that that's not the juicy yet? Um, it's like it's like what we said. Dulce, or yeah. either lizard people, or you know, gray aliens, or somebody is co-opting this with with humans. Okay, so it's not just their base alone. It's right, just like Dulce. Right. This may be the new Dulce. Yeah, could be. You know, the Dulce Wars were a while ago, so maybe after the Dulce Wars and could stuff be some like sort that. of headquarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could that see they that. moved out here. Yeah, I could see that. That could explain why the lizard people, but there's also some weird, like, everything I, from living scarecrows has been seen out in the runways to, like... And are we lumping in, like, lizard people with alien? For this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could believe that. Alien meaning Not non-human. from here. Yeah. There we go. Not from here. Mm-hmm. Non-human. Gotcha. Secret groups, as in, you know, the Illuminati, the Masons, the... Right. And there's a lot of Masonic stuff everywhere in this place. Right. Which, it could be a combination of this and that, you know... Um, so yeah, I, it's gotta, it's gotta have some sort of form with these secret groups and secret knowledge, you know, with having their symbolism everywhere. So there's some tie and the new world order. Right. Kind of also bundled into that. Right. Same thing. Yeah. What do you think about those? Um, I think it's all a possibility. I can't, I can't, I can't say it's just one or the other, but I think it's all, I think it's a combination of all this stuff. Hmm. hmm. Well, second to last one is nothing. It's just, uh, it's just an airport. It's just an airport that had some building problems, and it had you know it was way over budget, and there was contractors taking advantage of this, mm-hmm. and it it kind of fueled between the weird art commissions and like just like a perfect storm for an airport that people really didn't want. Yeah, and they're using like all these excuses and leaning into mm-hmm. it to not to. And then the airport the, the billions of it, dollars, you know, in the early two thousand. Yeah. So yeah, that could it could have just been a big money laundering scheme, and that could it could very well yeah. have been a big money laundering scheme. And they're just like, yes, aliens. Paint a, yeah, paint a mural that'll throw them off. It's another billion dollars for all of us to split. Okay, yeah, build a horse, huh? 
Well, they didn't tell them what to build. Oh, okay. They just gave the artist money and told them they wanted something large, like a oh, large okay. statue out front. And here's this much money. Build whatever you want. Yeah. A demon horse. Because they have to remember. We talked about that. They have, have to, spend to leave like it up. One percent. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, co- any building project in Colorado have to spend one percent on local artwork. Yeah. So they got all this money to like to just throw. What's one percent of six billion dollars? A lot. A lot of money. A lot. I'll take it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So if a shut up fund for this show. Um, so ten percent would be. Six hundred million dollars. So sixty million dollars. Yes, that's a lot of money for artwork. Yeah, yeah. It, is is it that? You it? could buy like a big chunk of Van Gogh's collection. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, including his ear, including his ear and the gun. So yeah, what do you think about all that? The nothing. It, uh, no, no, <laughs> it's not nothing. It's not just nothing. I yeah, I don't think it's a lot of the stuff we've already said. Now, like I said. Everybody at home, I figured it out. I need to hear this. Don't we, listen. Don't think, don't look. Don't read. I'm the, oh, I was just staring off in the space. So this is coming from uh, News Five Cleveland. Wow. This little thing I'm going to play here in a second. But before I say this, do you know how many people go missing at the Denver National Airport every year? Twelve. Hundreds. What missing? Hundreds from the airport. Now here's the thing: is the airport tried to do it with that one girl, the, the lizard people girl? Yeah. Is they say, no, they left. And I can find them on the camera showing they left the airport. But they're never seen again. Yeah. I think a lot of that is either either see the GI or they just, once again, they have tens of thousands of people sometimes flying through it a day. Right. That they just find a guy that looks close enough. And say, there he is. They look, there he is. Or girl. You know, it's mostly women, actually, that go missing. Yeah. Mostly women. Okay. A lot of women go missing. Interesting. All right. I'm going to play this clip. Of this young woman's story. And once again, credit to this goes from News 5 Cleveland. Okay. You ready? Yep. I was a perfect target. I was exhausted, emotional, on crutches, paying attention to nothing around me. I was flying from Denver to Cleveland. She had some time to kill, so she went to the bar next to her gate and ordered a drink. She says the bartender poured her wine, then told her she looked like she needed a topper. So she says he poured more from a different bottle. I just got extremely nauseous, came out of nowhere, and I was like, I think I'm going to throw up. She went to the bathroom and encountered a woman there. Then she heard the woman talking on the phone. It was a guy on the other line who said, this is the first time we've done this, that we've had someone throw up. All my red flags went up. She says she immediately went to her gate and got on her flight. My urine toxicology came back positive for benzos. A drug used for anxiety, a drug Madison says she is not prescribed. She believes it was a human trafficking. Ah, this is the world's largest sex trafficking ring. Mm. I think the underground base was built for this. I don't know if they're grabbing them for the government or whoever was supplying some of this money. Like I said, sometimes it's over hundreds of people mm. who are missing from this airport. Yeah, that's a, that's a it's lot. It's almost all women. That's insane. And with her story, and I believe her fully, with yeah. her story, it was a whole group of people organized. In this. Yeah. From, from the bartender? To you know, people at the airport. I think people get grabbed a lot at Denver. Hmm. Whether it's for experimentations, money, or sex trade. Or just, yeah. I think it's, I think it's a sex trade ring. I think all this stuff is being pushed to, to cover, cover up, up a sex trade ring. And I mean, probably the biggest one in the world. And look, you got, it's an international, you got people coming from, from all around, around the world. The world they have, so that's, like I said, the hundreds of people go missing mm-hmm. are probably mostly Americans. Yeah. That's the ones that can write reports and, and talk, you know, yeah. and investigate. Who knows? What the kind thousands of, of, you know, people from Sweden, people from Mexico, people, you know, from, from Haiti. Uway, from, you know, you know, it's just going yeah. missing. Yeah. I think this is all a sex ring. I, I can I'm actually 100% on board for this. Yes. I think all the other stuff is just bull stuff pushed forward to cover all this up so you don't look into this. The mysterious like the girl that had the lizard thing, I yeah. think she was drugged. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think her encounter I think she believes it. I don't think it was real. Like a fever dream. Yeah. Cuz yeah. she was drugged and got away. She's probably on yeah, like on like this lady said. Benzos will drive you nuts. Really? Yeah. No idea. And, and Rufalin. Yeah. It's like, well, if you don't get dosed right, like yeah. For, and I mean, there's no like, dosed right as far as the sex trade. That's the roofies, be, right? Yeah. Okay. 
you can go nuts. Hmm. Like I told you, my buddy got roofied, and he was like a bull out of China. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that and story. And you roofie a man, some, it's a lot different because the testosterone right. it can has fight a bad it. chemical reaction. Yeah. And men go nuts. That's scary. But it's, he wasn't like a, he was like an animal. Yeah. And even, so I think the Denver International Airport was built fully intentionally to be a cover up for a large sex trade operation. Yeah. Because why? Why? Uh, I mean, if you can do it, and it's not that it's done in plain sight, but you got all this other stuff to focus on that they put right in front of you that is in plain sight. She is one of thirty I found. Wow, that came out. Yeah. Wow. In my limited research for this episode. So why hasn't there been any police investigations into any of these accounts like that? Of you know, talk to that bartender, talk to you know, corroborated like some of their claims. Same reason. That all around the world they don't talk about you know it's just it's exactly for, it just doesn't want to I think this is a big grab snatch and grab area yeah because some three letter air agencies used to do this with other airports and other planes for their facilities and some evil or like some other evil people used to do this with some smaller airports from around the country or in our providences not in a state right that we can prove yeah and I think this was built to be the big one mm. and, and I mean. You know the, the amount of people you could ship out of this area. I'm saying there's like, it's all there. Yeah. It's all there. Lots lots of movements. It's it's just a perfect facility to move um people from all around the globe, you know, to centralize them in a certain area because I'm sure that's what's if you know these underground facilities, they're bringing people from all sorts of places in the world to this area. Not just people from, and then they're getting local people too that are drawn here that are going wherever they're going. You can snatch up just about anybody if you, if you can get them, and you hold them down there. And now you know you got these people bidding all around the world if they want a certain type of person. I'm sure they got it there, and I'm sure they're taking these people for, you know, genetic experiments as well. I'm sure a whole bunch of stuff is going on. Hundred percent. I think this is a sex trafficking, human trafficking ring. I I really think that's what is going on at the Denver International Airport. I agree with that 100%. And like we said with the Sononian and stuff like that, the front of house may not have any idea what the back of house is going, doing, yeah. but they just know not to question the back of house. Right. So like all the employees, the managers, all that stuff, you know, they know probably something's going on, but not what's going on. They and, just know they're not supposed to talk about it. And then now they got all this like esoteric odd I think meaning. it's all just stuff to throw you off the yeah. trail. Well, even the workers too. Like, mm-hmm. Like the newer workers, yeah, I, I, I don't know nothing. Maybe they are. It's kind of like a, like a in-house secret. Like, yeah, there's this stuff here, but we're not really supposed to talk about it because, you know, just to throw even the workers and the workers are like, oh, but whoa. they put signs about uh, the grays and lizard people underground right, yeah. and stuff like that. It's they lean so hard into it to, so fast to where it's like you know it's a j- joke to them at, mm-hmm. cer- at a certain point. Yeah, interesting. What do you think? I think I'm on board with this idea. I think that's I it. told you I solved it. I think this Did is you it. believe me when I said that? Well, you've always got your... I always am interested in to hear what you come up with, but this might be it. Like literally, and like I said, there's 30. I found 30 women at the same story. Yeah. That they were... Drugged and... and some of them were drugged like at the end of the plane. They would get like an extra pop and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, given to them and they'd be like, well, we're not supposed to... Like, we got to finish these off before... And then they'd start feeling weird. Oh, wow. That's weird. And then they just walk straight out. Like, they didn't get their luggage. Like, the one lady I listened to didn't take her luggage. She's like, I felt weird immediately. Yeah. And she's like, I knew if I stayed there much longer, I wouldn't be conscious. Yeah. She got outside and got in a cab. Oh, that's crazy. And then she started, and then she got, uh, I think the cab driver took her to a hospital. Wow. Uh, He thought, I think he thought she was having a stroke. Yeah. And she was roofied. That's crazy. She may have had benzos. Or whatever it was. She was drugged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm all bored on this idea. The Denver National Airport is not a portal to hell. Well, in a sense, kind in of. In fact, is. it's a portal to an island. Epstein Island. I wasn't going to say it. Well, I just did. Jeez, I'll have to edit that. At least it's right at the end. Right. All it's right. It's gone anyways. Well, Any the, last words? The hour no, and a half I, episode. I'm, I, right on the, I said it was going to be an hour and a half episode to right there. I'm it. I'm for it. I think that's it. I don't know how I'm going to title this. I don't know either. We'll figure it out. All right. I've been the great and powerful mystery. And I've been Jake Clone. I forget. 74. What, 74. Good memory. All right, guys. We'll catch you later. Bye. Bye.
Thank you for listening to the Crips of the Corn podcast. Please share with a friend you think would like us. It's the best way to help our show grow. Leave a comment, rate us, a five-star review. And remember, there is always extra content on Patreon slash Crips of the Corn.com. And don't forget, stay magical. Stay magical.